Tulio, an artist out of Jacksonville, Florida, came out with a new video not too long ago featuring Blueface. In this video, we're going to break down some of the effects using DaVinci Resolve. Before we get into the video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe for future content, and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. And there's time codes in the description. First up is the glowing eyes. It only happens for a split second in the video, but we're going to replicate it here. So we're going to get a polygon node. It's very similar to the effect I did in my matrix eye effect. Uh, but it's gonna be a little bit different instead of doing the tracking. I'm actually gonna do just a mask and I'm gonna animate the mask. So you're gonna select the polygon node in empty space and you're gonna outline the eye. You're gonna get a secondary node, do the same thing. This allow you to continue to see your subject. Also, you don't want to connect it to the uh, fusion node tree at this time. If you notice your mask got a lot of sharp points, you can actually select all the points by uh, a box drag select and go up to the top and hit smooth and it will actually round out the corners. Just a quick tip. Now you connect your mask to your node tree and you should see just the eyes of your subject. Go into invert. Make sure you invert it actually on both masks. And then also uncheck solid. With that done, you actually have the mask over the eyes, but you can also still see your subject. On your mask, you're gonna go and right click on the center and you click animate. Now what this will do is allow you to move the mask, also creating automatic keyframes and you can move the whole mask as a, as a whole, kind of like with a transform node. So as you see there, it's not tracking, but the clip is so small, I couldn't get your track to really stick. So then you just move it around and it will actually move the entire mask for you. And when it comes to animating the mask, you want to skip ahead about five frames. I found that to be the, to be the best spot or the best amount of frames to skip. So you can go one, five, 10, or I think it's one, five, 16 on this one. And just kind of move and adjust the track accordingly or move and adjust your mask accordingly. You want to do the same thing for the first note with the first polygon mask. Now these masks are rough because I'm just doing it for the demonstration of the video. So if you're actually doing this for like, say for instance, for client work, you want to make sure you get a really fine mask and with her, with this subject, her head actually tilts, so the mask is actually kind of like off, off tilter. So you want to actually rotate the mask to kind of match up what I... I'm going to kind of backtrack a little bit. I should have got the background node from the get-go, but you're going to put in the background node. You're going to change the color to white. You're going to connect your mask to it. And you notice everything is blanked out. So you're going to go back here. Uncheck invert. There we go. And go to the second mask, solid. There we go. Now, now we got a white, pretty much a white eye. Like I said, it's a little janky because it's just demonstration for the video. I'm gonna go in though and do a little touching up with the eyes because you can actually rotate your axis of the X and Y and Z axis on the uh, mask node uh, for better control. Though you might want to use like a transform node though. Now for the glow effect, I actually use X Glow which you need reactor for, which I'll leave a link for in the description. It's a free plugin, pretty much the best plugin you will ever use for DaVinci Resolve. Now in order to get that like spotlight like effect, you're gonna need another plugin called Raze. Raze is just a micro that you can download from reactor. Once you got the end, you wanna add it to the bottom of your node tree and you automatically get that spotlight effect. You can mess around with the settings and adjust the direction in which it goes. You can mess around with the X glow to adjust the brightness, contrast, Basically adjust it until you get the look that you're looking for. Now this background glitch is a real simple effect. You want to hold Alt and W, uh, copy your clip. You want to jump into the color page. You want to select your mask tool out of the power windows and you just want to mask out your subject. Once your subject's masked out, you're going to track back and forth. Once the tracking is complete, 
you're gonna go into your node tree and click add a uh, alpha point connect the node to the alpha point back in your edit page you basically want to take the clip that does not have the cutout subject and apply a digital glitch effect to it you go into the effects tab go to effects and find the digital glitch once it's applied you're going to go into the effects You can play it as it is, or you can go into effects and actually change the uh, settings. Basically, we'll just change the look of it. Let it play back, and you got the digital glitch effect. For a digital glitch background, rather. The background whip is super simple as well. Go back into the color page. You're going to max out your subject once again. The subject is maxed out once again. You're going to the tracking, track back and forward. I'm using little small subjects so you get a good track for the video. Then you want to add the alpha point again, masking out your subject. Then you're going to take the duplicated clip into Fusion and you're going to add a transform node. Place it on your node tree. In the inspector tab, you're going to change the edges from canvas to uh, warp. And it didn't change this to a fusion clip, so therefore you get the bars on each side of this of the highlighted portion. The highlighted portion is actually the part of the clip that I'm actually gonna transform. So you're gonna hit the uh, keyframe on the center, and you're basically gonna move the center point to actually warp the background. So I'm in the first frame, click the keyframe, go to your last frame, highlight the num numbers on the center point, and then you wanna just move it. Move it however many times you want. I think use about four or five is pretty good, especially for a small clip. Now, if you actually zoom out, you will see the squirt, the green box is actually the the transform point. That's basically where it moves to. But one of the things you don't get is the motion blur. So you go into motion blur. I'm gonna crank it up to about six, and on the shutter angle, I'm gonna turn it to about 280. They give you enough motion blur to. So basically it won't crash your computer. So now you got the moving background and you want to put your cutout subject on top. Now this is kind of a, like, once again, a rough mask because it's a demonstration for the video. Make sure you get a good mask on your subject if you're doing, especially for any type of client work. Now you can actually go into the mask and actually do some soft edges, adjustments and things like that. But it's good enough for the video. And that's how you get the warp background especially with the subject move because a lot of times a lot of people have the effect going with the subject still so back in the color tab we can create the mask it's going to be slightly different you're going to create the alpha point again actually going to track it first i'm sorry track the mask then you're going to create the alpha point Now you notice they actually just cut out the eyes. So we're gonna hit this little invert box here. It inverted the subject. And now you actually already see the second video is behind the first video. Now you can perform the zoom effect right here in the inspector tab, but it won't give you the best results. So we're actually gonna right click, turn to a uh, new fusion clip. We're gonna take our maxed out clip into fusion. On fusion, you're gonna use a transform node once again. You'll make sure in the first frame, and make sure in the first frame, you're gonna highlight the keyframe on the size and center. I don't, I don't need pivot, you're gonna cut the pivot off. I'm basically gonna go, I'm gonna go to about frame 30 and zoom in on this teeth. <laughs> then we're gonna move it down and center it. Now you notice the zoom cuts off at five, so you're gonna highlight that. We're gonna actually type in the number 20 and you're gonna get more mouth. So we're gonna Edit it again, recenter it. And right in the middle of the frame. You can zoom in a little bit more and edit a little bit more on the center. Basically you want to line up so basically when he zooms in, he's going straight through his uh, his sunglasses. And 
that's it. That's pretty much the whole effect. And I'm normally stop it at frame three and make sure cut the clip down. But we're gonna go into the settings and actually add some motion blur. Drink about five. Again, the sweet spot is right about 280. I'm gonna go back to the edit page. And I'm actually cut it down a little bit. But you can see the effect there. Because once you get past that, it starts to get start to shake all over the place. So once you get right through the glasses and cut trim the clip down. And that gives you the zoom in effect. And hit up my affiliate link in the description below. Actually, I'm probably putting the pin comment. Hit up cinepex.com. That's got a bunch of free effects that you can download. You can get the shadow glass and some blood splatter effects that you can put into your videos. Absolutely free. If you decide to purchase anything, they got a sale going right now. Use code winner 35. Get an additional 35% off your order. That's been today's video. If you get anything out of this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you have any questions or any comments, make sure to drop them in the comment section down below. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.